oh boy was 2024 an amazing drama filled season on the Bassmaster Elite Series and that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content please hit that like and subscribe button become part of the team and family and thank you. Thank you to all the new subscribers, the new members, the people who constantly go on there and make sure that they comment. I appreciate it. I try to reply to as many comments as possible and if you comment I respect it and I appreciate it but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's humbling. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button. Become part of the team and family. 2024 was, without question, the most drama-filled season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Since starting to cover bass when I did the radio show, this has been more drama than even the split. Some of it is brought on by just things that happen everyday things, problems that happen, penalties that happen that you just don't, you don't mean to do, but they happen. Then there's a lot of things that just happen because people love to complain. And complain happened more than I've ever seen or heard this season. And I'm not sure that controversy took more precedent than the anglers winning. We saw lots of penalties. We saw a bunch of whining people. We saw a lot of anglers upset. We saw a lot of fans upset. And we saw, we did see some absolutely great fishing, but they went to a lot of places that they consistently go to over and over and over. It's like beating a dead horse. They need to find some new spots for 2025. We had issues with forward facing sonar. We had what I believe is the best rookie class of anglers come in. Are they forward facing, uh, forward -facing sonar anglers? Yes, but so is everybody. If you're not using forward-facing sonar, you're not competing. Your favorite angler that's da down on the bottom, if he's on the bottom and not using forward-facing sonar, that's where he's going to stay unless they make some changes. First tournament was won on Toledo Bend by Coyota Fujita. Amazing tournament. Good place to go to. Overall, I thought this was a great, a great place. The second tournament was on Lake Fork with Trey McKinney, the rookie, winning it. We saw nine bags over 100 pounds. It was an absolute massive slugfest. It was one of the best tournaments of the year. It was physically insane. Justin Hamner won the Classic, which was fantastic. Classic, I felt like was, even though they say was the biggest Classic ever viewed, I'm not sure about that. I didn't feel like the Classic it didn't feel like the classic and that might be because of me because of being in this doing this for so long that uh, it doesn't have as much hype to me as it should have but Justin Hamner winning was absolutely it it was fantastic and Justin make is making a great name for himself Justin is one of those anglers you need to keep your eye on he's gonna win angler of the year he's gonna win tournaments he is phenomenal he is really a great ambassador as a classic winner and he seems just to have his head on on right this was where we started to see some penalties we started to see them we had some issues when when you have Trey win instantly we saw a lot of jealousy not from all the anglers but by, but by a few anglers that just felt like he's doing things wrong at this point in time we started to see not only penalties but we started to hear some of the rumors that ended up being exactly true Knowing what we know now about purchasing spots when you are an open angler, which was allowed, it was a rule that should have been changed a long time ago. And when it isn't in writing, anglers don't have to worry about being penalized for it. But this is where we started seeing penalties, we started hearing the rumors, and this is when really shit started to hit the fan for Bassmasters. Third tournament was on the Harris chain. John Garrett won that one. This is a place that I don't think they should go to, even though it's right here behind me. I don't think the Harris chain is is doing well enough as a fishery. And I mean that, uh, no disrespect to all the stuff that they've done, but we have had a ton of fishing tournaments here and it's either an open or it's an invitational or it's the BPT or it's, it's something all the time. The fishery does need time to re get better and it needs to heal. But the third spot stop was a good tournament, just wasn't the numbers I thought. St. John's, Corey Johnston won that. 
absolutely amazing. Amazing. We saw the penalties there. We saw Trey McKinney get a penalty because he didn't know a no-wake zone. We had Gerald Swindle call out Trey. We found out that while Gerald said he was the one that was the person who put out that protest, we found out that that story had more to it, I think. And I think Trey ended up self-reporting himself. And the rumors, accusations really ramped up at this point in time. We had people talking nonstop. We had family members talking. We had a whole bunch of people that were upset, and rightfully so, because they were hearing it from their family or their anglers, the anglers and the angler, other anglers, that there was something going on. There was something a little fishy in a bass fishing tournament. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But when the St. John's River was done, Corey Johnston won thanks to his brother, Chris. And it, it was it was probably a master class on how to sight fish the St. John's River. But another place that they go to way too often. Palatka is, it really is a really good fishery, but they are at that place too often and it needs to end. They need to pick better places. But we started, like I said, we started hearing lots and lots of rumors, lots of accusations, lots of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. We heard from everyone about it and there were a lot of truths. Blake Murray, the fifth event, Patrick Water Walters took down. My opinion, Patrick is one of the best anglers on, on the earth. Um, he is fantastic. A good tournament. I This was another tournament, just like all the first five, where if you weren't a scoper, you were probably not doing well. Forward-facing sonar has been huge this year in all fishing tournaments. And as we saw the first five roll through, it was all about forward-facing sonar. Wheeler Lake was next, and Cliff Prince took that one down. Probably a little bit more emotional. Probably one that I think everybody wanted to see. I think everyone pulls for Cliff. He's a good person. He's a great angler, and it was time for him to win. And he was at the bottom, probably pushing, trying to push to get as many points as possible. But we, we figured out uh, that Wheeler Lake should be called Cliff Prince's Place. It was a good tournament, great tournament, really, to be honest, and uh, couldn't be happier for, for Cliff. Smith Lake was neck, Taco Ito won. This is where we saw or heard of lots of dead fish. The fish mortality in this tournament was probably the worst bass has had. We heard constant complaints about pulling fish up from deeper because of, they were using forward-facing sonar, and then getting them up in that warmer water and the fish then having to travel a long way. We had, I think this is where we had the Ben Milliken incident with his three dead fish that he weighed in, but also the one that was, looked dead, but wasn't. We do know that for a fact now. He did admit that it was it was barely living, but it was alive when he released it with the, the weight clips. But this was another tournament where forward-facing sonar was completely dominant, and but Taco is just a fantastic angler. Again, rumor mill is just circling. It's At this point in time, it's not a, a, a whirlwind. It's a tornado. This is when everything, everything is all about why is this happening? Why are the rookies doing so well? That's the big one of the biggest stories of this year. The rookies were exceptional this year. But we'll get back to that. Next was Lake Champlain. Ed Lochran won an amazing tournament. This was... This was probably my second or third favorite tournament of all the tournaments of the year. I really, really enjoyed this, but I do enjoy smallmouth fishing. Again, forward-facing sonar played a big part, but there were some bad largemouth fishing people fishing, and Ed was, in he was amazing. He was it was, he won by one ounce, and it was an amazing tournament. It had a lot of drama inside the tournament because the weights were so close, and that's what made it so much fun. But amazing tournament. And then last but not least, we had Corey Johnston win on the St. Lawrence River. And that was where the pimple came to the head and popped. We had so many storylines because of the St. Lawrence River. It was ridiculous. We had the Johnston in, in, in G with the smelling salts and the name calling. And I understand that there you can call people and chirp at people. But it seemed a little off. 
We had then JT getting disqualified. We had Scott Martin get disqualified earlier in the year on the Harris chain for fishing in an area he wasn't allowed to. We had JT then again get disqualified on this one for failing a polygraph. We had an angler of the year and a rookie of the, of the year that were fighting. Trey had an opportunity to win both angler of the year and rookie of the year, but of course, Johnson Brothers won that. They won the tournament, they won the angler of the year, and they had, quite honestly, they're the most dominating duo there is. This is also the tournament we heard that Zona was leaving, which was crazy. We also heard that Rick Clun was not retiring, but he was calling it quits on the elites. We had all sorts of storylines. We had storylines after it. We had Mike Iaconelli just go batshit crazy over a comment. I think that when the year is over, there were so many storylines that just were ridiculous. My story, the storylines I'm going to remember the most this year is the nine rookies that are making the classic. The rookie class was the best class I've ever seen ever since covering bass fishing. I think the other things I'm going to remember is now I'm going to remember the Chris Zaldane yelling at a, a fan, yelling and screaming and pulling a Seinfeld episode, which I still think is wrong and I still think he should apologize. But here at the end, I'm going to remember the Mike Iaconelli incident here at the end, where I think not only did he do an injustice by swearing and cursing on his live show, which he's allowed to, but I just felt like it was overwhelming. And I think this has been the most drama-filled season we've ever seen on the Elite Series. And I don't think it's going to end. I think there's lots of changes that need to happen. But overall, if I had to give a rating, just like Dave Portnoy, I think I'd give this year on the Elites a 7.6. I think there was more drama and more coverage of the drama than the fishing. And I think Bass needs to look at themselves and put their foot down with some of the stuff that's happening and some of the things that are being said. I know the anglers can't talk and it allows their, their friends and other people to talk, but I don't think that's the right thing to do either. Having said that, I do think that there should be more transparency in a lot of stuff that goes on. And I think there's more storylines to the JT McKinney and of course like Ellie and, and all those other anglers. But I don't know. What do you think of this year's what do you think of the Bassmaster Elite Series this year? What is your rating, 1 to 10? Comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing. Thank you. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers, and thank you.